Cool. Well, we're just about at five. Uh, if anybody, well, I'll give a couple seconds for everybody else to show up, if anybody's showing up. Um, but the codes and slides for the talk are there. Um, you have all of the code and everything that I'm going to show you. Um, so if there's something that interests you that you can't copy uh, fast enough as we go by, you can just get it there. Um, so uh, let's get started. Um, so m my goals for this talk are pretty simple. Uh, first, I want to show you some bug statistics. Since I have access to the entirety of the BTS, and in theory, I should know what's going on. So I'll, I'll try to give you an idea of how the bugs are growing, whether our filing rate is going up or down, whether our fixing rate is going up or down. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about some of the new features that I want to highlight uh, that have happened since the last time I gave a talk. Uh, then the most important thing for me is I'm going to tell you all how you can help me um, and hopefully uh, show you a start to some of the places that you can, can work and how you can get a tiny version of the BTS up and running so you can patch the code base yourself um, and contribute. And then I'll uh, try to answer questions and have a discussion with any remaining time. Um, so let's start a little bit with some introduction. Um, the BTS is uh, major goal is to enable people to report features or bugs, uh, to track the evolution of those bugs, uh, hopefully to enable maintainers to fix bugs, um, and ideally over time to reduce the impacts of bugs in Debian, um, both so we can do release, but also so that uh, any issues that users run into are mitigated uh, during you know, their time using Debian. Um, the BTS is one of the first things that a lot of contributors actually interact with the development part of the, of the project. Um, you know, they might have installed Debian, but as soon as they have an issue, then they're going to figure out how to communicate with the project. Um, and so one of the things that's kind of important for the BTS is eventually to keep trying to be relevant for new contributors, to make it easier for new contributors uh, to contribute to the BTS. Um, so I'm trying to keep that in mind as, as we go along as well, in addition to enabling all the developers to do all the work that everybody does. Um, so it kind of has this weird two-faced thing. It needs to be powerful enough so that developers can get the bugs that they want, fix them, uh, and, and work on their stuff and not have uh, useless bug reports but also needs to be approachable for new contributors so they can get their bug filed and start interacting with the project and hopefully become DPL one day. Um, so this is a plot of the bugs from the beginning of time as far as the BTS is concerned, starting from bug zero, well, bug one, in uh, 1995. A lot of these very early bugs were actually missing because the archive archival system just threw away the bugs instead of actually keeping them. But we have bugs that are three digits uh, still present in the BTS. And so this gives you an idea of, of how the bugs have been filed over time. Um, we currently have uh, 800 and some odd thousand bugs, uh, 870,000. Um, and um, they've been growing at a fairly constant rate. So this is a logarithmic plot of bugs over time. Um, and the good news is, is we're not, we don't appear to be decreasing the number of bugs filed in Debian, which is sort of an indication of how many people are using Debian, uh, I think. Um, you can sort of see here some blips around the release. So when Jesse was released, there's a lot lower rate. And right before Stretch was released, there's a slightly lower rate, but it comes right back up. Um, just to give a... I'm actually a bioinformatician. That's my day job. So just to give a more formal answer, there's no significant decrease in bugs from 2014 to today. As you can see here, the p-value is 0.6, and the estimate may be slightly decreasing, but it's 10 to the negative 10. So that's basically not significant. Um, so that, that's good. But this is also a problem because it's not increasing either. So it doesn't mean we're not getting more engagement of people over time, which may be something we need to think about. Um, so roughly 134 bugs are filed a day. Um, I predict that the 880,000th bug will be filed in October 23rd, and the 900,000th bug will be filed in 2018, 
and we'll file bug one million sometime in 2020. Um, so uh, this, is, this is a fun game that Christian Perrier often plays, but anyway, these are my entries for this, this game. So you can see that over time it's been roughly linear, the increase in bugs. Um, however, the bug fix rate is less than the bug uh, opening rate. Roughly 96 bugs are closed per day. This is actually tracking bug archival, not bug fixing, because bugs can be fixed and unfixed over time. But once a bug has been fixed for sufficiently long, it gets archived. And so this is tracking when that archival happened over time. Um, so you can see it's decreasing slightly too, which is maybe a little alarming. Um, but anyway, that's the bug fixing rate. Um, this plot is a slightly updated version of the one that you all see if you go to bugs.debian.org um, uh, slash release dash critical, thank you. Uh, and you can see this. Eventually, I'll update this to actually do it using R. This is a much nicer plot than the one you guys get to see, but uh, GNU plot is a lot faster to run than pulling up an entire R stack with ggplot to actually do these, these plots that I'm showing. <laughs> so uh, that's why that's not there. Um, Okay, so enough, enough bug statistics. Um, let me give you a brief introduction to how the BTS actually works. This is the B BTS system diagram to some degree. Um, we have Deadbugs itself, which is the gray box, um, which has two basic components to it. There is a web front end, which is a set of CGI scripts that everybody actually interacts with. And then there's a mail back end. Um, and the mail backend is what actually processes all the bugs and does all the commands. So the mail backend runs on one machine called uh, Bookstahood, or however you pronounce that composer's name, which I'm probably mauling, um, and interacts with DAC and email and everything like that. Um, it also produces output that can be used with bug status that Brittany consumes in order to uh, do testing propagation. Um, there's also another hook called Smart Sync that was written by DSA uh, that syncs the entire contents of the archive, the BTS archive, every time it changes um, to a mirror. So we can have lots of different people viewing the bug web pages without impacting the uh, underlying mail backend. Um, so that's just sort of the overview. Inside of Debugs itself, this is the basic flow. Mail comes in, we check it for spam. Um, we split out things that are sent to control versus things that are sent to a bug. Uh, they're processed. They go into a flat file system um, under db-h for who knows what reason. Um, and then those flat files are indexed to make the CGI scripts. So the CGI scripts are only able to do queries that the underlying indices um, are built for. Otherwise, they have to go through the entire list of bugs and sort of do some manual looking, which is very, very slow. Um, so one of the longstanding um, goals uh, that I've had, and which I've been working on for probably five years now in my very tiny amounts of free, free time, is grafting on a database infrastructure um, to this, this plot. And so the... Database infrastructure is almost completely done now. Um, it uses DBIX class and Perl um, to handle all of this. Um, and all of the bugs can be loaded using uh, Deadbugs load SQL. And so this will load all of the unarchived bugs and archive bugs. Um, it also tracks versioning information, um, the Debian information, which uh, DAC gives the BTS. So the BTS knows which versions are of a source package are dependent on it. It also knows um, all the source package versions that are in each different archive component, um, as well as all the suites and all the log information. Um, so that's actually the major task that I've been working on during um, DebConf. Um, this infrastructure means that we can now do cool things like count who has sent the most messages to bugs. Um, this is actually incomplete. Archive hasn't finished loading yet. It takes about a day for our archive to load. Um, so I'm working on trying to make that slightly faster, but uh, subsequent runs of the import run faster. Um, so you can see that uh, Christian has the most, and not surprisingly, FTP master uh, has also emailed a lot of, of bugs, because that's the uh, bug closing that happens when you do an upload. So there's actually more 
uh, that's the unarchived bug count. Um, but eventually, this sort of uh, query will enable you to count, but more importantly, also get all of the bugs that you've corresponded with um, in real time. Um, we can also count the number of individuals who have emailed, mailed one message to one bug. Some proportion of these are probably spam, um, but you can get an idea. There's a large number of people who've just sent one message to the BTS and have never done a subsequent interaction. Um, and so it might be interesting to, for somebody to look at these and see what we can do to build repeat interactions with users in the BTS. Um, you can also see which tags are the most frequent in the BTS. So um, in this case, you can see that patch is by far the most frequent tag, followed by upstream. There's also some funny tags. There's a couple tags that have only been used once that were done in early development in the BTS that this query pulled out that I didn't even know existed because I didn't have an overarching view of all of the BTS until I started doing this import. Um, one of the other cool things is I'm also now calculating the status of all of the bugs in the archive um, over time. And so as the bugs change status, I can update what their status is. And this will enable you to select bugs and do the RC critical style listing, but for any set of bugs or any set of tags without having to recalculate um, the status of all the bugs. So currently, the way the BTS works is you have to give it something like a package or a severity or a tag in order for it to calculate the list of bugs, then figure out what the status is of those bugs, and then finally only show you the bugs that are interesting. This will enable us to only show bugs that are found in a particular architecture. So if you wanted bugs which were found in stable but not found in testing or in unstable, you can do that now. Well, in theory. The, the code exists to do that. There's no user interface yet. But, but that is a possibility to be done. Um, and so that's uh, a major, major improvement. Um, so there's still a lot of work needed for this SQL component. Uh, it needs to be integrated into CGI. I'm actually working on, um, I've been starting to work on that, uh, the rest of uh, DevConf. Um, and there'll be a phase over period where there's a debug slash, you know, database slash, and then the normal interface while I'm, I'm getting that working. Um, there's also issues with the database loading and update is very slow. So if you're an expert in PostgreSQL, I've done a lot of hacks to actually make it feasible to load this, the BTS, but it's still not as fast as it could be. Um, so if you're an expert in that and want to look at what's going on and what's slow, um, please let me know. Um, I've also identified some corrupted bugs, bugs where the log has gone away, um, bugs where I have no idea what the original report actually was, but I know what the status of the bug is. So in a couple cases, I've recreated my best guess as to what the report was because I know the subject, but I don't know anything else about the bug. Um, and so that's actually kind of useful because this is missing history that without me doing this work, you would have never been able to figure out what that bug was. Uh, at all, um, because the web front end would just throw an error uh, and wouldn't show you anything. Um, needs a lot more testing, because it'll fall over. Um, and then eventually, maybe in the next five years, I'll deploy it, uh, unless more people help. So but that's what's going on for that. Um, OK, so let me shift gears and talk on something else, a little bit about some new changes that have happened. Um, one of the issues is that a lot of people who aren't using um, command line based mail agents um, send messages that are format flowed or have other line wrapping issues. And this causes lots of problems when people try to read their bug report because the bug report is one line that scrolls to the right on the web page for you know, 40, 40 pages horizontally. Um, so I've tried to do a slightly better job of turning the bug front end into a smarter mail user agent for you. And in theory, it should be wrapping, forcibly wrapping all of those messages um, to the best of its ability. Um, I still need to fix some issues where people send control messages that have this sort of crazy wrapping and it makes the subject, you know, control or 
uh, subject negative one, foo bug, uh, and then oh, their mail software wrapped it, so they've lost half the subject, and now they've got an unformed or a malformed argument to control operator uh, uh, subject there. So that's not yet working, or I'm not sure if that's working. If you have messages that people are sending like that, um, send owner at bugs.debian.org an email uh, saying, hey, this is a message that got screwed up, and hopefully I'll be able to look into the, the uh, message headers and figure out how the mail software is telling you that you're supposed to magically unwrap that thing and, and make it work. Um, some of that might not be possible, but hopefully that'll be better. Um, another big thing is we're now using um, SSL links everywhere. The BTS was actually doing SSL for quite a while, but it would you'd send the request, or it had lots of links that were using um, HTTP instead of HTTPS. So you would send a request and then it would just redirect you to the correct encrypted link, which is kind of silly for a, a thing that's SSL encrypted. It should, everything should be SSL. Um, so in theory, that should all be done. I, I've caught, I think, the last couple of cases where it wasn't properly um, giving out the SSL link. Uh, if you find more of those, please let me know. Um, we're also doing e-tag-based caching everywhere. Um, so in theory, the, the BTS has a, um, there's Apache on the BTS has a ca on-disk caching system in front of it because some of the pages, like if you want to look at all the bugs in Linux, take forever to load. Um, and so hopefully this tracks all the dependencies of a page, looks at their M time, puts them together, calculates um, an e-tag, and hopefully that'll enable caching to work seamlessly. Um, I've already caught a couple cases where caching with car set uh, an Apache sometimes doesn't do the right thing, or it doesn't keep it as UTF-8 or not. But if you run into more of those issues, um, please let me know. A couple other things. Um, one is the there's a new accessibility tag, um, which, yeah, this is great. Um, um, and which is being used to track accessibility issues in the BTS. Um, for anybody else who has a specific issue that a project-wide tag would be useful um, as opposed to a user tag, which only is used in a small group. Um, please let owner at bugs.demi.org know. Give us a list of bugs and a proposal for what the tag is going to be used for. Um, and then try to keep after me to actually create it because it's very easy for me to see this and go, oh yeah, that's a great idea. I'm not in the ready at that moment to do it, but if I don't get back to you, let me know and keep, keep after me. Um, another tag that's my personal uh, tag that I created um, is the newcomer tag. Uh, I made an announcement a while ago, but I'd like to highlight it again. Um, please use this tag uh, if you have a bug that's suitable for somebody's first con contribution to Debian. Um, if you don't need to do anything else, you can just tag it, um, and hopefully we'll you know, identify some more issues that'll be good for first-time contributors. Um, uh, one more thing that I just wanted to highlight is that user categories are now selectable. Um, so that means that, let's see if I can even do this. Do, do, do. Uh, so way down here, this is bugs in FTP master. Um, somewhere down here, way, way down here. Now you can select all the, and there's some other stuff, some documentation for local uh, debugs, which I'm going to show you in a second, um, and documentation about how versioning in multiple packages actually works in the BTS. Um, so if any of those sound interesting to you, let me know, um, and feel free to jump in. Okay, so how can you help me out? Um, so all of the source code for the BTS is now linked from the bottom of all the web pages. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yes, the links are HTTP. Yeah, they should actually all be HTTPS. Even my own website now is HTTPS. So yeah, you could tell this. I haven't updated all this yet. Um, so the upstream branches, exactly the code that's running on Debian's BTS is in the Debian branch. Um, so if you want to know exactly what's happening, um, that's what this is right here. The upstream debugs branch is in the master branch. Um, and they're also checked out. So if 
for some reason you don't want to use Git, you can actually see the checked out versions in those directories as well. Um, if you want to track whatever craziness I'm doing, uh, my personal branches are on my website, which you can see, but I try to push all of them to the master and debugs uh, branches. But if you want to see all the craziness that I'm doing, it's there. Um, we have a mailing list. Um, on IRC, we're in the debugs and Debian bugs channel. Um, I'm Don Del Caro everywhere. You can find me. Um, so feel free to, in the debugs channel, ask any question or ask for help, or if you want to contribute to anything, uh, track me down there. Okay. So I'm going to attempt to show you how to use local debugs. Um, eventually, I'm going to make an upload to uh, experimental and unstable with a version of this that works. Uh, there's a version there that doesn't work that's been there for forever. But the version in Git actually works. So I'll show you how to do that really quick. OK, let, let's try this out. Maybe it'll work. Um, OK, so this is the demo. So we'll just git clone the, the repo. So you can run that. We'll just assume that I'd run it, because I've already run it before. But anyway, you can run git clone, et cetera. Then I'll enter the debugs directory. So this is all of debug source code. Um, and the thing that we're going to play with is called local debugs. Um, since we're running it out of the local directory, we'll, we need to give Perl the uh, Perl library include option to include the local directory in the search tree. So that's what that dash i dot thing is doing. Um, and then we can run local debugs. And I'll just run help really quick just to show you the options that it has. Um, and so what this little utility does is it runs a uh, script that can download bugs from the BTS using rsync and then run all the CGI scripts for you to show all the bugs that it knows about locally. So if there's anything that you want to do with the CGI scripts or anything that's user visible, you can use local debugs to make those modifications um, and try it out. So um, by default, it's going to download all RC bugs and all bugs that you've corresponded with and all bugs that you are a maintainer of, assuming you have the deb email environmental variable set in your shell. Um, if you don't, um, there's a little file called dead bugs, bugs to get that it'll create. Um, that you can specify sp sp bugs, packages, or um, severities that you're interested in, in getting. Um, and so this is just a set that's saying that I want all the bugs in uh, bugs.debian.org in dead bugs. These two bugs, which I just picked randomly, all the bugs in scowl, which is the uh, in US word list, uh, or sorry, it's the English word list, um, and RC bugs, for example. I can then run local debugs mirror. Um, I'm not going to let this complete, but this will run rsync to download all the bugs, um, which will take it a little bit, as well as some of the meta data it needs in order to actually serve the CGI. I can then run debugs daemon, and that'll start a little web serving daemon running on localhost that will serve the CGI scripts. And now I can run search bugs debian.org, and in theory, here I have my little local debugs bug report which shows all the bugs in bugs.debian.org. So you can see all the bugs there, um, which is pretty cool. So then if we wanted to modify this, let's, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work, but let's try. I didn't think about doing this before. Um, so OK, here's the package report, which is a CGI script that actually does all this stuff. Well, let's do something stupid. Uh, let me see, report. Okay, so uh, uh, 
I'm going to change report to feature logs here, okay, for no particular reason. So I've done that. Um, now I'm going to stop the daemon with a stop. I'll start it. Now I'll run the search again. And now, now it's the, uh, huh, it didn't work. Well. Ah, right. Thank you. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, nope. Now inside a bus, you need to open a bus, right? Huh. Let me see, because I, I thought I did the package report. Let's see. Yeah, feature report. Hm. Oh, this is why I should have tested this before. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> Uh, anyway, in theory, that should work. So you should be able to edit and see what's going on there. <laughs> okay. Um, so anyway, so that's local debugs. Um, that's how you can uh, test out changes that you make to the um, CGI or any of those features and then submit patches upstream that I can incorporate. Um, so with that, I'd like to thank the other members of the team, um, Lars Barson and Colin Wasson, all the Emeritus developers of the BTS who are responsible for the, the current design, and hopefully you all will come and join us at some point in the future. And so with that, I'll take any questions or comments or discussion uh, that, you, that you all have. Thank you. Um, so, how far are you from dropping all the file-based backend and having everything only in the, in the database? So, my plan is not to drop the file-based backend, at least for a while. Um, and the reason why is because the file-based backend is mature. Um, it's, it's pretty robust. It's super simple. Um, and so, that, that's why I, I'm not planning on doing that. Partly also because I don't have enough bandwidth myself to go through and, and make sure that um, a database only system is bulletproof. And, and me, for me, breaking the BTS so that I'm blocking all of your work is something that I just can't do. I don't have the time to, to be able to you know, stand in the way of all you developing. So, so that's why I haven't done it. I suppose at some point, if, if it became robust enough and the parts to move all of it into the database worked really well, then yeah, that could be a future. But. But it's not a plan that I have. Is, lo is local debug actually the same, which runs on the Debian servers? Or, oh, OK. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the CGI scripts are exactly the same. All local debugs is, is a little uh, thing that runs a local web, uh, web browser and runs rsync for you. I mean, you could do everything it does yourself. It just is a little wrapper to make it easy. Nice. Thanks. Mm -hmm. one, one quite stupid thing that has bothered me on the, on the bugsdevin.org website is this CGI bin part of the, of the URL. How mm -hmm. open are you to implement Apache reverse proxies so that when you type bugsdevin.org slash 12345, the URL doesn't change, so the copy-paste is beautiful everywhere? Yeah, actually, what I'd love to have is a, a um, mod pearl or dancer or something that just handles the 12345 and normally kicks out HTML, but if you says accepts JSON, kicks you JSON instead. Yeah, no, I'm, I definitely want that. Uh, it just is a matter of, of finding available time. I mean, the redirects work, but yeah. 
we, we could probably even just do the reverse proxy just to make it seamless. But. And patches go to you or to DSA? Uh, patches go to me. Um, the DSA has an awesome script that a lot of the services use that you can modify your own services uh, Apache configuration and reload it yourself because you have sudo to run one command which just does an RCS with the config file, which is, which is pretty cool. So. so I have a tiny question. You mm -hmm. said you created a tag for newcomers, mm -hmm. and I was wondering if you defined in the documentation what was suitable for this user tag. Oh, uh, yeah. So the tags are documented. Um, And since server control, I always forget exactly where the list is. But yeah, it's listed in where all the tags are listed. Uh, let's see, tags. Doo -doo -doo. Uh, there are meetings. Here we go. Um, thank you. Oh, there we are. So th that's the current thing. If somebody has a better idea, for wording for this, I, I'm totally open. Um, so that, that's the current definition for newcomer. I made a little blog post, but I, I'm telling you all about it because I think it should be more popular. I hope you all will help make it more popular. I have a question regarding the uh, interface. Uh, currently, the BTS uh, interacts with email, but I think a lot of the uh, newcomers, contributors from outside of Debian consider email to BTS like un unusable. I is there a way to implement other stuff, and have you considered that or in the same area as you don't have the time? Um, yeah, so, I mean, I'll if you'd asked me this question maybe six or seven years ago, I would have told you that no, email's the only real way. We want to use it as a filter. But, but I've, thank you. Uh, but I've started to, I mean, I've, I've learned uh, over time that you know, what, what works for me isn't necessarily what works for new contributors. Um, and so what would be helpful is yeah, an implementation that did this, ideally with an email round trip, just to say, hey, you're a real person, not a spam bot, or somebody who wants to use the uh, BTS to increase your website's reputation. But, I mean, with that simple uh, account sort of circle, then enabling web um, modification and submission would be great. Even just making a um, HTTPS report bug uh, interface so that Report bug doesn't have to try to get around the lack of um, email, that uh, outgoing email from a machine that just got set up would be simple. So um, yeah, so if somebody like, like a, a very discreet task could be just to write a CGI or something that could accept reports from report bug, turn it into an email that then all it did is forward it to you know, one person it got it. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that's the report I want to send. And that was it. That would be that would be tremendous and wonderful. And I would accept such a patch. Just a very simple question, but might become more complex afterwards. How huge is Debugs.cgi? The sorry. The CGI part of Debugs, how huge it's is it? It's actually that? not that big. The the real hard part is the um, all the modules behind it that make uh, make it figure out which bugs are present in which s version, mm -hmm. the transitive properties and all that. The, yeah, the, the reason I ask is because I've been playing around with Modulicious, which is a modern Perl web framework, um, and it makes giving you an alternate version, an HTML version, or a JSON version, or whatever, depending on what the user asks, extremely simple. Yeah. So if re-implementing that small part that is the web front end in Modulicious is not that much work, then that might be a way to do that. Yeah, or, or Dancer or, yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. So, I mean, 
I I'm trying to keep up with what the current state of goodness is for Perl web things. And I'll pick one unless somebody beats me to it, which would be great. I mean, I have no problem helping to facilitate other people writing these sorts of, of code. So I'm gonna, uh, I have, sorry, go ahead, whatever it is. I have a couple of questions. Um, one is, uh, I missed the, the local debugs. Is that using the flat files or the database? Uh, that's using flat files. Okay. The other is, what's the current performance of the uh, database against the full uh, corpus? Is it, uh, is it considerably faster than flat file is right now? Uh, for the queries that it's running, yes. But the full, the full database, for example, does not have all the mails and attachments. It just knows certain things about the mails, like the message ID, the date, the subject, stuff like that, who, who did it. But it doesn't have any of the, you know, the 30 uh, megabyte core file that somebody attached, for example isn't in the database. Does that sort of answer? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just wondering. The, the, the current uh, system is kind of hard to do discovery with. If you're looking for something in particular and you're, and you're cruising through it, waiting that three or four or five seconds every time is difficult. If something could tell you how many messages there are, and which ones are RC, and things like that, um, mm -hmm. a lot faster would be useful. Yeah, so the, the database is actually pretty quick. I mean, the those huge joins that I ran to do the counting all took less than about five seconds to return. Um, and that's significantly more complicated than anything that the current interface is able to do. Okay, thanks. So, yeah, it's pretty performant. So I have a kind of a ecosystem question. So I know the, the GNU project has adopted the bugs. So mm -hmm. I was wondering if there are other users that you're aware of and whether you think that I mean, that potential users, community of users of that bugs can be a way to increase the, buff, the bus factor of the project, which right now seems to be in a pretty bad spot. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, the uh, GNU project is using it. I'm not aware of anybody else who's using it um, at that level. Um, I know a couple people have set up individual instances, um, but yeah, it's sort of an unfortunate thing too, is I, when I help uh, the GNU project get their debugs instance started, I didn't think about the community model that I should be working on. It's a total blind sight for me, being a scientist, I'm used to working in very small groups and not thinking about you know, sustainability and community development. Um, and so that's something that I need to work on, is trying to bring them back, um, but yeah. yeah just to comment about the Database part, sorry. Um, one way to gain confidence if it actually uh, worked correctly would be to put a dump of this and a dump of UDD in the same PostgreSQL instance and do cross queries that cross both databases, like looking at, well, comparing the idea of both systems for each bug. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that would be good. That's something that, I mean, I have to admit, I kind of siloed my development, and I, partly because UDD was moving so much more quickly than I was. But, but yeah, we should definitely collaborate more between UDD and, and Debugs. Any other questions or comments? Feel free to, um, if you don't want to be on camera, oh, go ahead, sorry. So are you also open to having a web interface that is able to actually modify web uh, Debugs, like setting tags, closing,